Welcome, welcome to our first, uh, our inaugural edition of 20 Before 20. Uh, my name is Kevin Bessert. I'm part of the team here at 20 Front Street. Um, and the, the concept uh, of this podcast, pretty simple, like the name implies, 20 Before 20. It's a 20 minute conversation uh, with an artist or group that is uh, coming to 20 Front Street and just getting to know them a little bit better in advance of their performance. Uh, so I'm incredibly grateful uh, to be joined. The uh, group that agreed to be the guinea pigs for our first ever episode. Um, thank you so much. I want to introduce Trey Smith and uh, Jennifer Fielder, better known as Nashville country duo Smithfield. Guys, thanks so much for, for agreeing to do this and be our first guest. Of course, no problem. I feel very honored to be the first guest. So. <laughs> awesome. Um, and just to get this out of the way before we kind of dig in a little bit here, uh, Smithfield will be live in Lake Orion on Saturday, October 26th. Uh, so coming up soon, tickets are still available um, on our website at 20frontstreet.com. So please grab your tickets um, for Saturday, October 26th. Uh, but guys, obviously it's a return visit to 20 Front Street. Um, and I have the pleasure of knowing a little bit of your story, but I want to dig in a little bit. Um, obviously you guys have had a lot of new things going on this year, a lot of firsts it seems like. But the reality is you guys have been around as a group. Um, you formed back in... <laughs> 2011 um and have actually your relationship as friends and your families go back way further than that growing up in texas so tell us a little bit about how long you guys have known each other and and how that kind of family relationship was growing up in texas yeah um you kind of did your homework already so i appreciate <laughs> that um but yeah we met when we were 10 and 12 years old um, our families uh grew up together as you mentioned and our grandparents grew up together parents grew up together and we would do 4th of July and New Year's Eve parties um, all together as families. And that's when I first met Trey when I was 10. He was 12 years old and um, we never sang together. We always sang separately our whole lives. And then in college, um, Trey had been in a rock band and I grew up doing country music. And when his rock band broke up, he reached out to me and um, said, hey, my cousin thinks that we would sing great together, you know, why don't we try it out? And I was like, dang, like, I can't really say no, because his cousin had told me the same thing, and our grandparents are friends, and they talk, and I just felt kind of obligated to do it, because we've known each other our whole lives, and I thought it would be a one-and-done thing, and he came over, and we just had the most magical harmonies. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like God, faith, you know, luck, whatever you want to call it. It's like everything just sort of made sense when we sang together. You know, two people who had a passion for music and writing and performing their whole lives and to have, you know, uh, the history that we already had and then to discover that we had these harmonies all these years later. It was like, we just knew. We just knew. Well, and, and that's what I think is so cool because I know, um, again, something I read up was that Although you guys grew up together and you kind of grew up in the same area, you felt like you came from two different sides of music. Um, and so bringing that together, just talk a little bit about the two different sides of music that, that you both brought into Smithfield. Definitely. Well, as Jen mentioned, I was part of a rock band, so I'm definitely bringing a lot of that flavor into what I do. And I think one of the things that makes us so special is like our vocal blend because I do come from like that more power, like rock kind of grungy voice um, arena and Jen comes in with a more kind of tone driven country vocal. And I think it's the blend of those two things that make what we do so unique. But uh, I think without that, it wouldn't be um, what makes Smithfield special. Awesome. So with that, you know, one of the things I, I love about you guys is there really truly is no lead singer, right? So when you guys go through that creative process of writing a song, how does that play out in terms of the writing and then with the vocals um, and the arrangement, how does that kind of all come together throughout that creative process? We kind of let the song and the idea lead the way, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we co-write a lot here in Nashville. That's kind of why we moved here. We, we um, knew that our type of country really fit more with the Nashville sound um, because, you know, growing up in Texas, there's Texas country, which we, we love our home state and we love that kind of music. That's just not who we are as artists, right? And you've yeah. got to be true to who you are and what you sing about. Otherwise, I think people will have a hard time connecting or maybe they'll smell just like fakiness, you know? Like I sure, think people, sure. can, people can tell when you're not, you know, being genuine in, in your art. 
And so, you know, we moved here for the songwriting mm -hmm. and kind of learned that, like, we should always have an idea that fits what we do. And, and our music's really inspired by, you know, family, um, friendship, relationships. You know, we've got songs about Trey's ex-girlfriend. We've got songs about my future husband. We've got songs about our families. We've got, you know, songs about heartbreak and loss and and life and like everything in between and um we let the idea and the song lead the way so like if i if trey has an idea about his ex-girlfriend well it doesn't make sense for me to like right. lead that song i'm probably gonna let him lead the way and then i'll come in on some spectacular harmonies and like add my flavor to it but at the end of the day where i'm gonna let trey tell his story in that song and then if it's a true duet you know we we definitely take you know a big role and in writing each our own verses because Trey and I at the end of the day too are two different people you know and it's about what do these two different people bring together to make Smithfield Smithfield but also when we're individually singing like there's just certain things a guy would sing about and say yeah. that a girl wouldn't right gotcha. so it's yep. very important that we're both in the room and we're both agreeing on what we're doing but that we're also bringing our own individuality into the lyrics that we're saying because it's like Trey may have a great idea and I'm like oh I love that line but I wouldn't say that and a girl wouldn't say <laughs> it like that you know what I mean yeah yeah so and, and vice versa too I have some things that just don't make sense for for Trey and so it's really a, a team effort with our co-writers and making sure that we let the idea we let the song and the idea lead the way and then we just kind of put the the sprinkles on the cake you know what I mean yeah. Sprinkles on the cake. Yeah, like we're creating, <laughs> and we're baking, we're we're icing it. We're, I like sprinkles on my cake. We're all yeah. working together, you know. So <laughs> I don't know if I explain that. No, I love it. That 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 really does kind of give us a, a, a peek into the process. Um, and it sounds like um, that's kind of what is the Smithfield magic. So that's so great. Um, so you mentioned your move to Nashville, um, and I know you guys have been there for a while. Um, and I think that's why. I mentioned at the beginning that there, this is kind of a year of first because you did put out what is your kind of debut or first full length album, um, Country with Heart Part One, uh, that came out back in May. Uh, and I know that the uh, album release down in Nashville was at one of my favorite rooms in Nashville. Was at Analog in the Hutton Hotel, um, which is one yeah. of my which is one of my favorite rooms. So, congrats on the new album. But what what I would like to go back to is you've been in Nashville for some time, and I know part of that frustration or kind of pent up with getting this album out goes back to um obviously years of included signing with a label a label going under so it kind of walk us through that process of of how it's taken so long to get here um to release this album finally um that you were able to do on your own yeah i mean it's it's a journey you know being in music and being an artist is certainly a journey and artists is is an epic one, if you will. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we started here in uh, 2012 is when we moved to town. We started, signed our first record deal about eight months later in 2013, um, which was really cool. And we thought, awesome, we signed our first record deal. We're set. We're just going to like blow, be big stars. blow <laughs> up now and everything's going to be gravy. And uh, about a month before we went to radio for the first time, our president called us one night at 8 o'clock and said, unless a miracle happens in the next 48 hours, we're going to have to close our doors. Wow. The whole label. Okay. And that was like our first kind of gut punch. You have a few gut punches while you're, while you're doing this thing in Nashville, and that was definitely the first big one. And we just kind of regrouped after that, and we believed in what we were doing. We believed in the music we were making and thought that, there were a lot of people that would love it if they heard it. So um, we started a Kickstarter campaign out of that and raised enough money to make our first EP back then. Sure. And uh, we put, I think it was seven songs on there, just threw it out there, had no idea exactly what was going to happen. And um, through that process, we got a call to play the Grand Ole Opry for the first time, which we've heard of that one before. Amazing. And yes. um, yeah, we definitely said yes. Um, we didn't say <laughs> no, we'll think about it. And after we made that debut, uh, Sirius XM, The Highway, started playing a song of ours. And so it was really just kind of this like domino effect of things that happened that really finally put us on the map as artists in country music. And uh, from there, we ended up signing another deal a few years later. That sadly did not work out either. Um, so we've been through two deals, technically, and uh, became independent again in 2020. And uh, at that point, we were just like, you know what? 
there's so many avenues and ways to be an independent artist now. And there's so many um, just ways you can get your music out there that you didn't used to have, you know, 20 years ago. And I think it's more possible now. Not even 10. Not even 10. And I think it's more possible now than ever to exist as an independent artist in country music. And we just decided to invest in ourselves and invest in the fan base we built over the years and the, you know, mountains of great music we still had to record and release and set out doing it. And um, it's been three, four years now since we've been independent. We've just continued to build that audience and tour all over the country. And, um, you know, our numbers keep going up, our audience keeps going up. And as long as people are, keep growing in, in our fan base and keep loving the music that we're making and we can go around and, and do something we love for a living, it's, it's been a great journey and it's one I do again. Well, and a testament to what you're saying, exactly what you're saying. I mean, you guys have built up over 100 million digital streams. So I think exactly what you said, it, it, that journey, uh, but you've been able to build up that fan base um, and to, to do it independently um, is fantastic. So so let's talk about the new album. So that it came out back in May and, and you just described kind of the journey to get to that point. Um, mm-hmm. But the new album was, was finally released. Talk about what went into that as far as doing it independently, which we just discussed, um, and just how excited you were to finally get those songs out there. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the biggest disappointments of our first record deal when they folded was we spent a whole year writing songs and we created an album that never came out. And, you know, the label wanted a hundred grand, you know, from us two you know, broke college kids that just, <laughs> you know, got to Nashville and it's like, well, we don't have that kind of money to, to buy that from you, you know? So, um, you know, starting the independent journey, even with all the EPs over the years, allowing us to build that 100 million digital streams, you know, being independent the last couple of years, we, we were finally able to own our music. Before 2020, we, we didn't own anything. Um, so we were able to save up and, and get to do that album, which makes it really special because our fans have brought us through all the way through this whole thing. We wouldn't even make music if it wasn't for them supporting us and helping us through the years but for the first time we got to put out an album and that we self-funded through our music via our fans so it just after 12 years you're like that's what makes that so special I don't know how you can't root for that because (laughs) it took so long to get to it and we truly feel like it is the most I think we say this about every project, but, you know, I just feel like it's the best music we've made to date. It's the most authentically Smithfield. We call it country with heart for so many reasons. Yes, our kind of country music is more heartfelt. It's more deep. You know, hopefully it makes you really feel something, shed a tear or two. Like, that is our goal and our job in our live show is to make you feel something with our music. Just to make you cry. We're just trying to make you cry. <laughs> Happy, all, happy tears. All happy too. tears. Yes, but it's also country with heart, like that grit, that heart that it takes to fight for yourself every single day when, you know, something falls through or somebody tells you no or the rejection is thrown in your face. It's like having that heart and that grit to believe in yourself and your music too. So that's why we call it country with heart. It's also the first project, and I'll let Trey dive into this part, the first project that that uh, Trey got to be a producer on, which is something Very he's cool. wanted to do for over a decade. So you know, we we got to mm-hmm. write all the music, perform and sing it, but then Trey also got to do the production side, which is its own beast in itself. So this this album is really really special for many many reasons. <laughs> yeah. So Trey, touch a little bit on that. That just getting to produce for the first time, kind of what what went into that. Oh, that little thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, you want me to talk about that? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it, she, as she said, it's something I've been interested in a lot, for a very long time. And it was always kind of the end game, even from the beginning, that I would be involved in some capacity down the road. It's just yeah. I didn't possess the ability at the time to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, but then this thing called 2020 came around and had a lot of time. A little extra time in, in my apartment with nothing else to do. And so I was like, what a perfect time to really sit down and learn all this stuff. Um, so I really did just dig in and, and trial and error and failed a billion times and then figured out a few things and got to the point where I felt like I could, you know, confidently produce something on us. And I knew I could do it at the point that she said I could, because she will never lie to me. So, (laughs) 
Um, she is brutally honest or just honest or brutally honest, whatever it may be. But uh, she uh, she felt like it the same way that it was ready to give it a shot. And we did. And really proud of the way it turned out. Yeah, that's a super cool piece I wasn't aware of. But uh, to Jennifer's point, I mean, just makes it that much more special um, with you guys getting that out. Um, so let's talk about what's next. Uh, obviously, the new album came out this year, and I know as if that wasn't enough for one year. Um, I believe both of you, marriage this year. I think, Trey, you recently got married, and Jennifer, you're soon to be That's married, whatever. right? Yeah, just a few weeks, which is crazy. Um, yeah, and on that subject, you're asking what's next. Yeah. Um, we are in the interim time period as we're working on Country with Heart Part 2, because, you know, if you have a Part 1, you got to have a Part 2. I, I, had a, yeah. I had that on my list of questions. <laughs> if, if Part 1 did, in fact, imply there's something more to come. Yes. I just want to skip to Part 3, actually. 100%. <laughs> Um, but we're actually, you know, we write a lot of heartbreak songs. If you know our, our catalog, there's, you know, there's a lot of heartbreak in there. Um, there's a little bit of everything, but that's a common theme. And, you know, this past year has really shown us that, like, you can have this musical dream and you can chase these dreams and also have somebody that, you know, loves you and supports you through it all. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're just in this love season of our life. And we've got a Christmas song coming out called Mary married christmas love it um, it's an original and then we also have a wedding ep that we're working on so there's gonna be a little ep it's gonna drop february 14th of next Bell year of course the day of love yes um so we've got a couple of our songs that are already out that we're making wedding versions of one's already out um called we'll figure it out got a wedding version of that and then um, a couple of originals. Uh, actually, the songs that we both wrote for our for our spouses are going to be um, on the EP as well. So that's what's coming is a lot more music. Hopefully, um, also it's going to be at the Analog, the release show of um, the wedding EP. So very cool. More shows, more more music, all the things. Very cool. Um, I can't believe it, but. Um... We're running out of time here, and there's so much more I wanted to get to. So we'll just touch on a couple of things here. Um, when you come to 20 Front Street um, in just a little bit over a week, um, what can people expect? Obviously, it's a little bit of a different show, being that it's a listening room show. I know you guys do shows in all different size rooms and, and kind of configurations. Mm -hmm. But um, with the size of our room and the listening room environment, what can people expect when they come see Smithfield at 20 Front Street? Oh, you're going to cry. <laughs> happy. We're going to cry um, happy tears. Happy tears, yeah. sad tears, maybe. Who knows? Um, you know, it's just kind of a really intimate. We love doing acoustic style because we get to just kind of talk to you. It sounds weird to say, but, like, when you're doing a full band show, it's a little more put together and rehearsed. Mm -hmm. This is just raw. This is us just talking to the audience, telling our stories, talking about how we wrote the songs. And I really don't think you can hear our voices and harmony blend that we talk about so much in a full band show like you can in this style show. Absolutely. It's just all out on the table, as raw and real as it can get. And I just think it's such a unique experience. Great. Well, we obviously look forward to having you back. Um, one question I was going to do, one question that we're going to kind of use throughout all these podcasts, and it'll be the closing question for whoever our guest is for the week. Um, and so I just want to ask, um, give me, and either one of you can answer or both, what are you listening to right now? Or, or who is someone you've seen recently, maybe live, or you've just been listening to that's, absolutely just getting a ton of play right now on your playlist or is kill is killing you right now <laughs> jen's gonna be seeing something live tonight i've been listening to the new like every girl probably in america right now and all over the world sabrina carpenter's uh new album and i'm going to see her tonight at the arena like literally after we get off this podcast um i'm going to go see her so i'm really excited it's been on repeat what about you trey um, I listen to so much different stuff. I've well, been, recently. Recently. <laughs> What's on your playlist right now? What do you listen to? Uh, I've been listening to a lot of, like, Van Camino, which love, is, like, love, a total rock band. Love, like, love them. I've seen, I've, seen, I've seen them live. Great show. Oh, okay, nice. So you yeah. get it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I love a lot of the stuff that they do, and I don't know. I, my, my musical taste is all over the map, so that could, that answer could take a while. But And, Jennifer, just so you know, my daughter just went to see Sabrina in Detroit when she was here just a few weeks ago, and she gave it – Two, oh. She gave it two thumbs up. So okay, um, I'm so excited. You should have a good time tonight. So, um, <laughs> guys, I can't thank you enough for agreeing to do this. Our 20 minutes, believe it or not, is up. Um, but we look super forward to hosting you once again at 20 Front Street. We'll see you guys in just a little bit over a week. 
Um, again, October 26th, come see Smithfield, downtown Lake Orion at 20 Front Street. Um, can't wait to have you once again, and best of luck with the new album. We can't wait to hear those harmonies live and in person. It's going to be great, man. Thank All you, right. guys. Thank you. See you all Thanks. soon.